Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. We uh, wanted to do a press conference just to uh, give opportunity for some questions later on, but to address our community. First, I'd like to say thank you, Dr. Um, Zuzmasi and Delisa, for coming out to vote. And, um, and I truly, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you all for voicing your opinion and your, your vote and practicing and uh, your constitutional right. Um, and that's something that each and every one of us have. And now that the election's over, uh, we move forward uh, to finalize the gubernatorial, which is the runoff um, we're waiting for CEC to finalize. But, <coughs> excuse me, I wanted just to, again, thank all the supporters that came out. Uh, thank those uh, that have been with me since day one and then still here. So I would like to also give uh, our Lieutenant to be uh, Senator Bini the opportunity. <coughs> all right, thank you, Gov, and good afternoon to <coughs> um, our media partners, and good afternoon to all the viewing public that are watching um, in the CNMI and also abroad. Um, <coughs> you know, it's been a long process, uh, the campaign, which, you know, started a year and four months ago, <coughs> and um, also heading into um, to the election. And like the Gov said, we want to thank um, um, all the voters that came out to exercise their, their right and their duty um, in this election. Um, we did know that there were <clears throat> a significant number of uh, failed to vote um, a population. Um, hopefully in this runoff election, um, all of the, those people that failed to vote <clears throat> could come out and, um, and exercise their right as well. Um, we want to thank the, all the supporters that supported our team, um, just the candidates and, and everyone involved. That, that, that came out through the uh, um, to the campaign and through the election. Um, you know, we want to thank the um, 5,726 voters who had confidence in us and casted their vote for the Torres Sablan um, tandem. And uh, we hope that we could um, gain more supporters in this runoff uh, election. So, <clears throat> and with that, you know, we want to take some questions from the media, um, uh, just so that we can, um, you know, address um, uh, our people and our community. Well, uh, I think it's just now, uh, it's obvious that uh, those two uh, have been in collision. Uh, <clears throat> we can see that during the debate, uh, both of them basically had almost the same uh, uh, opening. Uh, they both attacked me. Uh, and so, um, of course, uh, uh, there's a lot more supporters. I mean, uh, we've been getting supporters from the independent and as well as the Democrats coming over and saying that they want to support uh, our tandem. Um, and so, again, uh, we stay focused and uh, want to reach out to, to the Democrats and like to welcome them and, and welcome their supporters. That at the end of the day, um, we will be there for, your, for everyone, just like what we've done in the past in making sure that we take care of our community, uh, whether it's Typhoon, Yuktu, Solilor, Mankud, or or pandemic and it's important for me to say that because as governor and especially having a uh, lieutenant to be someone that the northern marianas um, have a very reliable lieutenant governor who's able to go out and work um, and that's what uh, that message that we want to come out is you have someone here who's with me uh, who's not afraid to do work uh, and we are reaching out to them to come over and, and vote for Tori Sablon, because we are the right team and we've been here and we'll make sure that that we'll be there for the, the community, uh, regardless of race, party affiliation, age, gender, uh, we'll be there for each and every one of them. It sounds like you're, if my last question, uh, it sounds like you're expecting some crossover from the party uh, based on what you said. Uh, I wanted to bring it back to the last general election and the votes that uh, supposedly maybe even uh, Uh, 
Well, it's, it, again, um, reaching out. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, there's only two candidates now. It's uh, uh, Mr. Arnold Palacios and Mary Appetain. Um And I look forward. I, I want to, to ask uh, the community, um, perhaps on neutral uh, grounds, and, and let's do a debate. Uh, I think this is another way to, to welcome uh, and go another round. Let's do three rounds and have the community have the time to really ask questions, uh, open forum, uh, whether uh, do it through chambers, uh, Rotary, or even NMC. Um, I think the community deserves that. The community deserves uh, to have uh, this opportunity to, to uh, ask questions and see uh, what our answers are and how we're gonna approach things, what we've done and what we're gonna continue to do. Or the community. And if I may chime in, Thomas, to your second question, um, of course, every candidate has their um, their support group, right, and, and, and their followers. And um, with the lieutenant governor and the mayor um, um, forming a tandem, um, of course, their followers will will, will, will go with them. Um, when this campaign started, um, and, and the governor asked me to to run in his, as his run, running mate. Um, you know, it was my uh, desire to to really pull my supporters as well, right, and create a new dynamic of supporters to support the Republican Party. So, um, you know, it's uh, it's inevitable. You know, candidates will come and go, and their supporters will come and go. So, um, um, with with the recent news of the the um, Democratic uh, gubernatorial ticket, um, with the Sablan Staffler um, joining hands with with um, um, Palacios Appetite team. Um, I, res I respect that. Everyone everyone has a choice um, and they're going to reach out to whoever they can. We're going to reach out to whoever we can. Um, that's the process. That's the structure. That's the system of elections. And, you know, we're all going to do what we need to do to um, be in a place to, to create um, programs and to improve the quality of lives of our people. I have, I have the utmost trust, faith and confidence in our voters. Um, those that will come out in the runoff and, and, and choose um, a governor and a lieutenant governor that will do well for them. And, and I, I, I leave it up to them and we respect that, that, that process. So, um, you know, we're, we're looking forward for um, a smooth election. You know, it was, it was, it was a gruesome, it was a gruesome election, gruesome campaign. Um, you know, a lot of stones and spears uh, launched and, and thrown, but you know, it's, it, it's tough to, uh, um, to go through that, but we, we have to focus. And, and, and the Torres Sablan tandem, um, um, we, we, we maintained that professionalism and we focused on what we needed to do for our people. And the reaction from all the launching of stones and, and, and spears were just react with work and bring progress for the CNMI, bring services to our people and improve the quality of lives of our people. That's the bottom line. That's what has to be done, and that's what we will continue to do if we get the blessing from our people in this one-off election. Mr. Governor, uh, to follow on uh, what your running mate just said about a smooth election for the runoff, um, everybody on this side of the table over here, we've all spent quite a bit of time <laughs> in that um, And even with your, uh, your team of observers that were there for the party, <clears throat> Um, I, don't, I was wondering if your office or your uh, party has reached out to the election commission to find out what might have happened to have a little bit of delay and if we might have a little more smooth. Uh, we have, I have not uh, met with our um, team. Um, I think they're still resting. Mm -hmm. No, but um, we are going to actually have a briefing right after this one um, and make a decision moving forward. You know, it, it's. I know everyone's frustrated. I mean, that, that's hands down. But uh, on one side, we don't know what's going on in there. And so I know it's easy for us to, to say so, so many different reactions. Uh, you guys are there, uh, you know, um, but obviously we want a smoother process, uh, a faster process, and probably simplifying more in how to count those ballots. So again, uh, I hope that this will be the last time we have this this um, time 
that uh, that it took this time to to give a result. Yeah, Brad, it, there was um, <clears throat> there was there was a lot of frustration, right? But I I, I really empathize with um, with the election commission and their director and the commissioners. Um, um, you know, there's a lot of moving parts in in every election, and you know, it's a there's there's a lot of things that you got to put together and, and put a structure together. Um, we don't know um, what happened. One of the questions where there were a set of numbers that were thrown out um, um, on the media outlets and, and you know um, messages or whatnot, and then you know they had to get those numbers fixed and, and, and stuff. So I'm sure that they'll come out and they'll explain um, uh, what happened, you know, um, you know, with the machine and, and, and ballots going through the machine and getting kicked back out and whatnot, and, and, and that was through watching the whole um, you know the whole coverage um, on, on, on television, but. Um, we're hoping that those those kinks are, are fixed and and this runoff election you know we can get some results uh, quicker um, i'm sure you know we can um, everyone has learned from that so we can kind of prevent prevent the situation just one follow up on that um, one none of the numbers that were released by the commission there that night had any of those uh, false numbers they all just came out we got those reports like, uh -huh. after each running of the machine so yeah i'm not sure what happened with this stuff online but yeah. they delivered to us and uh -huh. read out loud where they had okay. any change from the start yeah. to the finish. Um, the other thing is, uh, uh, eight years ago you were in the same situation with going to a runoff election. Uh, do you think that that's going to be any advantage having done that before and going through it? Uh, is that your experience? Is that help you with that? Uh, yeah, I think that uh, our signs are up. Right, uh, thanking of our community. Uh, the day of the election, we had all of our bigger signs that says thank you very much uh, for all your support uh, and knowing the, knowing what we need to do. Uh, we've been down this road before, and and we have a whole new team, and and our team we just met with. So if that's vote buying, I think I would like to give more to the people. I never came back and said please vote for me. And by the way, all of this is. For everyone that qualifies, it's not doesn't it's not just Republican or any other party. It's for everyone that goes home and follows through the guidelines. And I'll do it again. This is for the people. Why is it so wrong? And I hope those that are complaining, I hope they can do something for the community. And I promise you, I will not say vote by or whatever the language is. I hope they can do more. Um, and I wish I can do more. But this is the time that we have it. It's a time frame. I will continue to do what we can to help the community. Again, all of these resources that are giving out to the community has guidelines for everyone that qualifies. And then in your first 100 days in office, if elected or re-elected, what do you foresee your first 100 days in office? Like? I, uh, I'm excited with the boost program. I mean, mentioning boost program, we're giving these resources now. I think in the next 30 to 90 days, 100 days, um, we're going to see those come into fruition and we're going to see our economy really be ready for our tourism that comes in. Hopefully by then I uh, will have uh, Australia come in. So uh, that's my excitement in terms of the tourism market, having Australia come in and join uh, CNMI, making it a tourist destination for, for other markets. I think it's just, um, you know, first hundred days, um, even the first day, just continue <laughs> the work. Um, it doesn't take, you know, it doesn't have to take 100 days, but the work has been has been continuing, you know, right now with new airlines. Um, there's a lot of infrastructure projects and and, um, you know, trying to get our, 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 our tourism um, markets back in um, our tourism industry back in visitors, um, you know, trying to um, be proponents of, of, of um, small business and young entrepreneurship through the boost program. You know, these are all programs. These are all systems that any government should provide, not only the CNMI. That's what your government leaders are here for. That's what your government is here for, to provide for your constituents, to provide for your communities. When people say that the, the community is struggling, then this is it. We give these, these resources to them, right? And, and that's what helps them. And, um, you know, it's unfortunate that there's other spins to it, but I feel good when people, um, you know, receive a resource from our government and, and you know, it, 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 it lifts some stress off their shoulders and all that. 
So we're just going to move forward with really just a lot of hard work. And, 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 and that's what we have to put in. Focus and hard work. Focus on what we have to do. We're not going to be here for, you know, you know, for eternity. For, you know, there's going to be a new set of leaders that are going to come in. But right now, it's our time to do what we need to do, right? And, 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 and that's what um, uh, the Taurus of Lan um, um, tandem will do. It's just continue work. Bottom line, provide for our community members, provide for our families, create a quality of life for our people. And we'll do it, at, you know, we'll, we'll do it on the first day and we'll do it on the last day and we'll keep doing it as long as the people give us a blessing to do that. That's what we're here for. That's what all the elected officials are here for, is to do work. That's, that's, that's the bottom line. And I want to add to this, to what uh, you to be said. Uh, you remind me of the Bush program. So we have this Bush program that we've been working on. Because it's election, should I hold on it and say wait until the election and then decide whether you should do it or not? Our turn doesn't end until January. I am a governor for the Sinomai all the way to January. We are in this process where there's, I get, we get the another four year blessing from our community uh, and to guide them for the next four years. But until January, I am obligated to make sure that I try everything I can to provide you the resources, the opportunities. Uh, and I believe we've done that. I, I will continue to do that. Uh, whether it's election year or not, we are, I am bound, we are bound to make sure that we do work as hard from the first day to the last day. And that is something that uh, Senator Vini and I has continued to show our commonwealth. Can history show that in past runoff elections, the incumbent governor has won? How confident are you that your tenant will, uh, I guess, history will repeat itself? How confident are you that your tenant will? And uh, I'm confident that we are putting all of our effort into it. I am confident in terms of putting up my heart, my soul, my family, my love to show the Commonwealth that I am the right person to guide and to continue to guide the Commonwealth because all the things that I've done for our Commonwealth and to have a Lieutenant Governor that who's not willing to hide, that's willing, willing to work, has continued to work, is not afraid to hide. I mean, I, I, I want to make sure that, that the community here has someone that truly really loves the Commonwealth. It's not afraid to work. It's not afraid to come to work. Um, and will be there every day, um, whether at the office or at the field, to be there with our first responders, and to be there uh, every step of the way with the community. And that's what the Commonwealth deserves, a hardworking governor and a hardworking lieutenant governor. And like, like I said, you know, um, it's, it's been a long road and, and there's been a lot of negativity happening, you know. Um, we're against all the odds of everything that's been thrown at us and it's tough to take, like I said. It's tough to take. But you have to really dig down deep in your heart and soul and focus on what we need to do. That's, that's what we, you know, that's how we've been able to react to, to all of that. Just positive campaigning and really focusing on the work that we need to do. Um, you know, it, it's, I have confidence, I have faith and trust in our voters. And in this general election, which just finished two days ago, you know, 5,726 people had confidence in, in us, right? And I'm hoping that we can get more. So again, we leave it to the people, we leave it to for them to feel what we can do for them, right? I, I really give, give so much credit to our forefathers and our leaders that have led in the past. And I've said this before, you know, 30 years ago, I was a child, you know, going to a campaign, listening to, um, you know, our, our previous leaders, right? Say, give our children the tools to lead in the future. And I want to say that 30 years ago, I was that child. And here I am now. I'm ready to lead. Here we are. Indeed. We're ready to lead. And when our time comes, and when our younger future generation comes and has the desire and has the heart to lead our commonwealth, I will happily hold that person's hand and lead them up to the seat and tell them, 
do good work for your people. It is your turn. It is your turn to do good work for our people. So like I said, we're young leaders. But back then, and we listened to, we listened to the older leaders and we listened to our forefathers. Give the children our chance. We were those children and now we are ready to lead. That's all we ask. We thank everyone for their service. And I'm hoping that our future leaders and our people will thank us for our service when our time comes to pass on this torch to the future leaders of this commonwealth. Uh, this is my last uh, gubernatorial uh, election, right? Um, and I too want to thank everyone. Uh, and I, I truly echo what uh, Lieutenant um, Vinny said about the opportunity, about us doing what we need to do today for the next generation. I'm 43 years old. My next generation is after this. I'm not going to wait to 60 or 70 or 75. Um, and I've been very blessed uh, throughout my political career. Of course, there's challenges along the way. But I want to ask the Commonwealth to please give me and Senator Vinny this opportunity to continue to serve. Serve for you, all of you. Because you have two candidates, a young candidate who's eager, who loves this Commonwealth, who will do whatever it takes to make sure that you are safe, we are safe, that the opportunity is here for your children, that the retirees will continue to get your pension without worrying next day whether you're going to be covered 100%. And we will continue to push to make sure that you also get your bonuses if we get additional revenue. Um, and so that is why we continue to run, and I want to thank all of you for today. And so, Thomas? Sorry, just two last questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, the first of which, uh, just given your remarks, uh, reading between the lines, are you saying it's time for Torres, uh, it's time for Palacios and Appetite to step down after their decades of leadership and hand the torch over to you, the uh, Mr. Candidate? Well, I'm, again, Thomas, I'm not going to put words into you decide what do you comment, but I will not wait until I'm 60 years old or 70 years old to call it quits. Um, this is my last gubernatorial. I don't see, I want to I wanna spend my time with my kids. It's not even grandkids, just my kids. I want to spend time with them. Um, I've served as a Congress, Senate, uh, Lieutenant Governor, and one governor, and who are hoping to give me this opportunity. Um, I want to do other things uh, and give opportunities to others. I'm not going to stick around to up 60 or 70 is what my, I'm saying. All right, and uh, just as a follow-up, you were mentioning that uh, no matter the uh, outcome, uh, that your obligation is until January. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we're in a unique situation here where uh, the lieutenant governor also has, is still your sitting lieutenant governor. Mm -hmm. uh, he has not left that post. Can you tell us what is it like at the executive office right now? Do you two talk to each other at all? No. How are the affairs of the Commonwealth moving forward until the obligation is set for them in January? Well, since you asked Thomas, I, I mean, I mean, there's no, no, no secret. Uh, throughout the pandemic, I was the only one working. I mean, if you want to be honest and for me to straight out, you never see Lieutenant Governor to edit anything. Um, he's afraid to go, and I'm going to be straight down. He's afraid to go to any of the COVID sites. He's afraid to go to the airport. He's afraid to even visit any of the first responders. And that's why you never see him around as an obligated governor. I make sure that I'm there with the first responders. And that's why I continue to emphasize the government and the people of the Commonwealth needs a governor and a lieutenant governor who is not afraid to do work. So you have one guy who's working so hard. Imagine if you have someone else, a lieutenant governor, that will be there for you, for the people of the Commonwealth. Forget me. If you don't like me as a, as a governor and you're running with me and we're done, that's fine. But you have an obligation for your people, the Commonwealth. Can he say that? Can he literally say that I've been here for the people of the Commonwealth for the last four years? I hope he can, but I guarantee he can't because he's nowhere to be found. I'm saying it because the people of the Commonwealth needs to know the truth. Where was he? during the time that the Commonwealth needs him the most. 
I was there. And I will continue to be there till January. And if I get blessed, I'll serve another term for them. Thank you. All right, so just three <laughs> seconds, go ahead and just tell them to see the uh, okay. I guess we'll just, uh, you guys have 30 seconds each. Thank you. And, um, you know, to our dear people of the CNMI, everyone that's watching, um, if you're in the CNMI and across the, abroad, um, you know, I want to thank you for, for all the years, all the years of, um, of, of trust and, and faith and confidence in, um, in me and, and, and having, you know, joining me in the vision um, of our CNMI. Um, you know, it takes a lot and it took a lot to really decide to run for Lieutenant Governor in this term. I had to dig deep down inside my heart and my soul to see if this was the, the, the place that I wanted to be. And I felt it. I felt that we had, I had an opportunity. I had an opportunity to expand um, um, my desire and to serve our people in a different capacity. And that's the exact thing that I would do. So as we come on, uh, like I said, I, I thank all the voters that came out this past election and casted their votes for us and all the voters that came out to vote in general. And in this runoff election, I'd like to ask everyone for their trust, their faith, and confidence in Governor Torres and I to continue the work, continue the good work, continue the hard work for our people, and to pave the way for our future leaders. So with that, I'd like to say thank you, Sisus Masi, and Olamai to all of you. And we hope that we can get your blessing in this coming runoff election. Oh, uh, um, I am very blessed uh, to continue to call Sino my home and I am blessed that throughout my political career uh, all of you have given me the blessing, vote of confidence and today uh, I am with my Lieutenant Governor-to-be asking again that I've worked so hard for all of you to make our lives better. From the time that you need someone to be there for you, I was there. And I guarantee you, the Lieutenant Governor to be, will be there for each and every one of you. Please give us this opportunity to serve you. But I'm Zuni Manenko, Pogo, Natalwani, Ugago Hamzo, Nibin Dishon, Gunaiza. Zamloke, Unanai Hamzo, except in Jim Donkul and Zeus Masi, Nitodo, Zudumizu. E consuela mizo, tani gwe naiza mizo, ni na izo, i katsongu, zani familia kutodo, familia mami. Por hamzo, zani senti gwe naiza, na kentunua tsumo tsogwe hafa bida mamami para hamzo todos. Pesenenno, malangu zo talo be sa ngani hamzo, na ingwai zamzo todo, tato marianas, todo hamzo ni manga gi gwe ni, san lago par ochona lugat, san lokis zo smasi par hamzo ni manga gi gi. Sedbetsyon, militar, si Jesus Masin ni Jesus Mizo, sacrifice ni Mizo, sa tafana waisa uno sa nocho, sa loke tababa ko sa nta sa tafana dispensa uno sa nocho, sa uno unita ginigay maranas. Por favor na yami na putinida na si Centervini ay bi representa Hamzo, sa hami na kandidato gumaya sa Hamzo gilin fundo ko sa mami, si Jesus Masin ng gilisong, alam mo yun.